This is the Toss Up, where an expert line panel dissects the hottest stories within the world of sports. From some of the nation's strongest college programs right here in Bloomington to the games and moments that capture the world's attention, it's all right here on the Toss Up. Well, this is Steve Ayer's world, and we're just living in it. Ever since Ayer took over as head coach at the start of last season, Hoosier fans have been getting really into IU Volleyball, and rightfully so. Not only is Ayer a one-man hype train, but he's also shown that he's a pretty solid coach, too. The volleyball program has shown steady signs of improvement over the past two seasons, capped off most recently with a win on the road against a ranked Kentucky team. The Hoosiers have won eight of their first ten games this season, but have yet to face the gauntlet that is the Big Ten. So, how good is this team? And what's in store for the rest of the season? Our panel will break it down right here on the Toss Up. Hello everybody and welcome to the show. I'm your host Drew Fry and alongside me I have an excellent group of panelists. We'll start off with Haley Jordan from IUS TV Sports right here, uh, our volleyball reporter. And we've got Will Trubshaw and Jackson Kinney from the Big Ten Network. So, let's start with most recent uh, news that we've got. The Hoosiers went on the road. They beat that ranked Kentucky team in Lexington, the biggest win of the season so far. Haley, I'm going to start with you. Just in a broad sense, what went right for this team? I think they had an awesome offensive game, and that was something that they struggled with against Oklahoma, and that was something that they needed to improve on. So offensively, they were on their A game. What about Will? Yeah, I mean, you know, definitely going off that, uh, Coach Ayer talked about in media availability this past week. Uh, the team was doing a really good job at the net, you know, defensively uh, with their blocks, but also offensively. They were finishing off their kills, and that's something that's lacked for them at times this season. They haven't been as successful with that. And again, it's still kind of a, a young group. You know, you got nine new players in, um, so they're they're working out the kinks. But that game against Kentucky, it's one of the ones where everything's really clicked, and the result showed. Yeah, going off that, everything really clicked. They were missing three of their starters against Kentucky in that game, too. So the depth was so important there, and they really came out and stepped up. So that was one of the bigger things in that game that really proved to be essential to winning it. And now we're talking about the good, but obviously there have been some bad this season, two losses. Um, Jackson, I'll send it right back to you. With the losses to Oklahoma and Santa Clara, to sort of flip these questions, what went wrong? Well, like Haley said, against Oklahoma, the offense wasn't as strong as it needed to be or, at, or as it has been in other games that they've won. And mainly against Oklahoma and Santa Clara, it's been kind of sloppy plays, service errors here and there, just the little things that you can't have happen when you're playing teams like Oklahoma or Santa Clara who are very good. Yeah, you know, I think those losses, you can chalk it up to uh, a loss of composure. You know, at times, you know, there are a couple games in which Kendall Bierman didn't play. She's really a stabilizing force. And it shows when she's not on the court as well. Sometimes the team loses its composure, and especially that game against Oklahoma. They were up 2-1 in that one before they fell behind at home, ultimately losing 3-2. Uh, to two. So they've had their chances, and I think it's just a matter of maturing and getting to know each other better as a team because those were two very winnable matches. Um, and you know, also the Santa Clara one, that was coming off a long weekend, so probably some just tired legs there. Um, but I think it's nothing more than just, you know, working through the kinks and building a little more chemistry, especially against those really tough opponents. Yeah, and to add to that, Santa Clara, the second set, the ball came between two freshmen, and I don't think that was anybody's fault. It just, they're new to the team. It's a new team. The coach is fairly new, and so they're still working out those little kinks, and it's not going to be 100% perfect during the first couple weeks of volleyball. Yeah, exactly, and still plenty of room to grow from these teams, and Haley, I'll shoot it right back to you. After that Kentucky win, Indiana is starting to show the nation that they might be taken seriously. Um, they're on the outside edge of being ranked. Where could this team go? Is this a team that you think could reach a high ranking at some point, or is there still a large gap? Yeah, there's still a gap that needs to be filled, but they got 13 points just recently, and I think that's a huge stride. They haven't been ranked in a long time, and I think Aird is going to be the guy that gets them to that spot. 
I think it's really contingent on how they do in the Big Ten. Obviously, we're going to talk about it a little more as the uh, evening goes on here. But the Big Ten is stacked with ranked opponents. If IU can knock off a few of those, they'll for sure correct the top 25. They're sitting on the edge right now as it is. Again, wins against Kentucky, a close game against Oklahoma. Uh, they've shown they've got what it takes to be a ranked team nationally. So I think it's really just a matter of time. All right, they've played a lot of games at the beginning of this preseason. They're 8-2 and two right now. And that record's better than a couple teams in the top 25 right now. And they've got good wins against teams like Yale, as you mentioned, Kentucky mm -hmm. now, who was 15th, now 16th. But they could be easily top 25, top 15 team in the country, and especially if they perform well against teams like Minnesota and other Big Ten teams who are in the top 10 even. Yeah, I really think, again, it just comes down to what can they do in Big Ten play. And it's a good thing that Big Ten play is coming up because that will be the real – uh, proving ground. I mean, you hear the girls on the team or the women on the team talk about it all the time, how they love playing here because of the competition the Big Ten brings. Um, and that's going to be put to the test this year. You know, they're going to find out how good they really are uh, in the Big Ten. I, I think it's going to be a proving ground to say they are a top 25 team. And yeah. not only. Oh, yeah, and they're freshmen. They're starting to get their feet wet. I mean, they're freshmen. They're 18 and 19 years old. They have exactly. three years left. And can you imagine if they're already doing this well? Can you imagine where they're going to take the program in the next year, the next two years, next three years? And I think we are just going to keep moving right up that ladder. Yeah, and as we've all mentioned, this like the Big Ten play coming up, and these players are starting to get more into it. But also we've seen a lot more of the fans getting into it on this end. Since Steve Baird has come in, he's – really created a, a whole new culture. I mean, how has that culture changed? Haley, you've been following the team for a while. Like, what is different about this group of athletes? Yeah, well, versus Oklahoma, almost 2,000 people filled Wilkinson Hall, and I think to have that support, that really fires those girls up because they've said it in media availability, it is nice to have a crowd. And not only is it nice to have a crowd, but it's nice to have a nice facility like Wilkinson Hall to call home to play those games. When you're in that atmosphere, when you have fans cheering for you that fill the 3,000-seater Wilkinson Hall, it's going to make you play better. It's going to affect your performance. Right. Uh, yeah, right, because Wilkinson Hall, I think, is a big part of it. It's a brand-new facility. Opening night was packed for the volleyball team this season. And the team, obviously, has improved, but just having the new facility, it's on campus, easy to get to. I mean, they used to play in the university gym, and that's out near on a weird side of town that nobody really wanted to get to. <laughs> so having yeah. a brand-new facility that's super nice, easy to get to with a good team, I mean, it's easy to see what kind of culture change is taking place. And yeah. Will, we've even seen like student sections popping up like on a regular basis. There is a student section there to support IU women's volleyball. I mean, you don't see that much outside of maybe football, basketball games. But how big of an impact is that to have a group of fans like dedicated to showing up to volleyball games on a regular basis? Well, I, I mean, it's huge. Uh, again, what you guys have been talking about is that the fan support, the, the, the women really feel off it. This team, they feel that energy. And Wilkinson Hall, the acoustics in there are unbelievable. It gets so loud. If you get a thousand people there, it's deafening. Mm -hmm. You get two, three, if it gets a sellout crowd, 3,000, I can't even imagine what that place will be like. But, uh, you know, it's just having a student section, having those, those athletes behind you too. A lot of time, the student athletes come to support these players. Having that support, knowing those people have your backs, it's just another advantage you have when you're playing at home. And again, it's something probably you didn't see at University Gym as much. There's a student section, but it wasn't half of what we've seen at Wilkinson Hall. So I really, that whole culture change has been fantastic. And you know, I think you can credit Steve Ayer too with that. He is just such a phenomenal motivator of his, of his players, of the student sections. I mean, he, he preaches you know, getting big crowds out there, and it, I think it's starting to pay off. I really do. I challenge you guys, next time you take a stroll to Wilkinson Hall, take a look to your right. There's a student section, and they wear the most outrageous <laughs> costumes. They try to distract oh gosh, the other yeah. team, you know, on their server seat. I think my personal favorite right now is the peanut butter and jelly duo. And, you know, where, like wherever it. you see the peanut butter, jelly's nearby. Oh, yeah, and there was a night, I believe it was opening night, where the swim team was there in the student section supporting the team. Halfway through the game, they take off their shirts, swimmers' bodies. They painted their chest, Hoosiers. Excellent. Second set comes, they take off their candy stripe pants and their candy stripe speedos. And oh Steve Ayers told us in media availability that he absolutely loved that because mm -hmm. even the swim coach Ray Luz called him and asked him if he could do that. And he's getting calls from every other coach like, "Hey, my team wants to come support you guys. What if 
what do you say about that? Like, Steve Aird's getting a lot of support, not only from the community, but from the athletic community here at Indiana. To follow that up real quick, what is the best part of this Steve Aird era? Like, what, what do you think is the best thing that he has done that he's brought to the program? Other than improving it, because obviously, like, that should be number one, but outside of, of that, he's very nice to the fans. He goes out in the community. He wants the community to be there. And to the media, he's more than generous. He gives us so much time, and he's just the nicest guy out there. Yeah, I mean, I have to second that. He is, he, he gets it. He gets what it's all about. It's about you know building a, a winning culture and a fun culture around this team, and that starts with you know getting the word out through the media uh, and you know opening your arms to the community, be it the students, residents of Bloomington, or even the other uh, athletes and teams. Um, I, I think he's just done a phenomenal job of that so far. His father aired. He has two <laughs> kids of his, or a couple kids of his own. And a lot of times you guys will see during media availability, he refers to his players as kids, but not in a disrespectful way, but just because he is kind of their father figure during the year. He sees them more than their own parents see them. And he's basically in charge of them, in charge of their year, in charge of their academic year. He's a huge influence. He really loves and respects his team. And I've never ever heard him say that, you know, this player didn't have a good game because she's not a good player. He always says she's going to get better the next game. We're going to fix it. We're going to come back and we're going to win. It's always a positive outlook on mistakes. Yeah, I, I, lo I love that atmosphere. I love this discussion. We do have to take a quick break, but once we come back, hopefully a lot more of Steve Aird, hopefully a lot more great IU volleyball conversation, but we will talk more and have some predictions from our panelists, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the show. Now we've talked a bit about IU volleyball season so far, but a lot of this team's success would not be possible without contributions from a few key players, including sophomore Brianna Edwards. Now, as much as we talk about the correlation between Steve Ayer taking over the team and the team have been improving overall, a ton of credit needs to be given to Edwards as well. As a freshman last season, she played in every set and led the team with 360 kills. And not only is she a kills machine, but she led the team as solo blocks as well. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. She was a freshman. Now in her sophomore season, she's not taking her foot off the gas and she's already picked up over 140 kills so far, averaging close to four per set. And she's becoming more efficient too, limiting her errors from last season. Now her impact to this team really stood out most recently in IU's upset win over Kentucky, where Edwards recorded 20 kills almost half of the entire team's total. And she found other ways to contribute as well, with five solo blocks and six digs en route to a huge victory over the ranked Wildcats. But now conference play is coming up, and the Big Ten will bring a tough slate of teams for the Hoosiers. So, Jackson, I'm going to send it over to you. What will Edwards, and the rest of the team really, need to do to pick up some of those wins down the stretch? Well, they're going to have to keep playing like they are. They're playing offensively excellent. Brianna Edwards, 141 kills this year. She leads the team. And just her teammates, Daisha Lofton, she's extremely great. She leads the team in blocks. They just need to keep this up with the offensive and defensive pressure that they have. They have the formula to keep going far when they enter conference play. Yeah, you know, this team... They play inspired. They play with a little bit of passion. I mean, uh, and a little bit of flair. They really, they like to get after it. They're very competitive amongst themselves. Uh, you know, they really, they go at it in practice, and, and it shows on the court too. So, they they're going to need that flair come Big Ten play. And I think it shows. You know, again, when you get those upsets over those big teams, uh, a lot of that has to do, obviously, the technical stuff that you're executing. You know, 17 blocks in, in one match is pretty impressive. Um, and that's not something you can duplicate all the time. But if they bring this attitude, uh, this flair, and that's something that I think has been instilled, of course, by Coach Aird, uh, they're going to be just fine. 
I mean, what can I say? These women are eating their Wheaties every morning. They are coming out <laughs> on top. They are yeah. strong. When you have a player as powerful as Brianna Edwards, you know, she's getting these kills. I mean, 360 kills, there's 365 days in a year. And it's only, I mean, one season, 360 <laughs> yeah. kills. Are you serious? Like, this girl's going places, and she is the exact player that Steve Ayer needs to take that team up rankings. Yeah, it's been incredible for um, Edwards and some of these other players on the team. Who are some of these top players that we haven't mentioned yet? Haley, you mentioned Edwards, and we've talked about some of these players earlier. Who are some people that are really standing out? Daisha Lofton cannot be overlooked because she was the MVP of the tournament last week. She is also one of the players that I think has had an outstanding performance thus far. I'm pretty sure she started almost every game, and it's her blocks that really rake in those extra points. Yeah, definitely. Will, what do you think? I mean, absolutely. Daisha Lofton at the front of the net there is tremendous defensively, uh, especially when she teams up. Uh, Brianna Edwards, when those two get together on blocks, uh, it's hard to get things by him. Obviously, um, I, I'm a big fan of Kari Zumach, actually. Comes off the mm -hmm. bench a lot. Not one of the bigger names um, that you think of. Kind of more of the second team um, front line player there. But she has been phenomenal. She's really picked up the slack when the Hoosiers have needed it. And again, like we talked about that uh, Kentucky game, they're missing three starters. Um, so players like Zumach really have stepped up big time. I think a player is underappreciated is Jackie Armour, who is up on the net alongside Deja often a lot of the time. She's second on the team in blocks. She's a transfer from LSU this year. So she's brought a whole different kind of play style into the coach Air's offense, and it's meshed really well. So these two, Deja often and Jackie Armour, they've become partners in crime at the net, and hardly anything can get by them. And so as Big Ten play comes up and we get into that tough slate that we've mentioned earlier, who are some of the players that are really going to need to step up to compete with this elite competition, or is, is there just too much of a gap? What do you think? I think Haley Armstrong is going to be very important. She's a little banged up right now, but once she's healthy and ready to go for Big Ten, fully healthy, she's going to be huge. She leads the team in digs this year with 97 already. And then her backup, Bailey Lebo, who is second in digs with 89, those two are going to have to form kind of a tandem back there at Libero, where... They are the backbone of the defense, basically, and they're going to be what gets this team through Big Ten matchups. I'm going to go with Emily Fitzner. She is mm. going to be key, the freshman coming in, younger sister of Evan Fitzner, formerly of the basketball team, of course. Yes. Um, I mean, she's just a tremendous, tremendous volleyball player, um, be it serves or on the defensive end in the second row there. Uh, they're going to need her to step up big, and she and Haley Armstrong have, again, really stood out this year as freshmen. Uh, but they're going to need uh, Fitzner to keep doing what she's been doing all year long. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Jackson on this one. We already know that we have a strong offensive group of women. You know, not much can get past them, but where it's been lacking in some games has been the defense. The ball's falling between freshmen, but I think they're working out the kinks and they're finally starting to figure out kind of how to work together as a team. So let, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's just one conference win a few years ago before Arid comes in. Arid comes in. And the team starts to sort of pick off, move out of the basement a little bit of the Big Ten. Now, do you think that IU should be considered a legitimate threat from teams like Minnesota or Penn State who are consistently at the top of the rankings? I think they are a huge threat at this point. I mean, we're 8-2. and two. We're only just getting started. And these girls have not had that much practice. Air did not have that much time to get these girls prepared for this season. And they're already coming out making power moves. I think they're going to be a huge threat. And they're going to be an upset in this Big Ten. I'll give you two reasons why I agree with Haley. And of course, So the answer is yes, they're going to be a threat. One, the depth on this team is ridiculous. I mean, you look at the injuries they've already had to deal with. You know, Haley Armstrong goes down. Mm -hmm. But you've got Bailey Lebo, who is an all-conference type kind of player on the back end there, to fill in her shoes as an upperclassman. Um, just the depth is tremendous. They could run really two or three uh, teams worth of uh, six players out there. They're, they're just so talented there. Uh, and second, too, there are now nine players uh, on this team that uh, Steve Aaron has brought in. You know, he's got more of his own players, more players that are meant specifically for his system. Um, and they were successful last year in, in and out of conference play. Um, I, I, the only way to go is up right now. They, they mm -hmm. cannot possibly do worse. The, they, the only progression is up. 
Right. I'm really excited to see them get in conference because I think they're going to give a team like Minnesota a game. They're going to give a team like Nebraska, like Penn State, who are all in the top ten right now. They're going to give them a good game, and I think go either way in those matchups. I mean, playing top ten teams and you have a legitimate shot at winning, that's a great thing, and this team has the chance to do that. Yeah, and that brings a whole new atmosphere to this program. Now, speaking of bringing things to the program, and Will, you touched on it earlier, the injury bug. Someone we haven't talked about yet is Kendall Bierman. She was a huge factor in last year's team before she went down with a leg injury. And now she's sort of working her way back in, but no one really knows what role she's going to play. Jackson, where are we with Kendall Bierman? We're not really sure right now. At the beginning of the year, when they were playing a bunch of doubleheaders in the tournaments hosted here on campus, she would play one game a day out of those two just to not overwork her ACL as she's coming back, get her back in a groove. But now we're not really sure where she's at uh, health-wise. Well, you know, I, I think it's more a caution thing because you got to keep in mind she's roughly 10, 11 months removed from ACL surgery. That is not, she didn't break her pinky. That is a serious <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, injury and issue. Uh, the fact that she was able, even able to play that early on uh, in her recovery just speaks volumes to the competitor she is and, well, frankly, how far modern medicine has come. But I have to imagine uh, the further we go along, in the season, we're going to start seeing her more because she is a crucial, crucial cog in that offense. I mean, the Steve Ayer talks about it all the time. Uh, her arm strength is second to none. She is a world-class hitter. Uh, so as soon as they can get her back healthy, uh, she's going to be starting on the front lines. Right, she's a world-class hitter. When she has played this season, she's been outstanding. Yeah. And so, Haley, how important is Spearman to this team? Do you think that there's a whole new step the Hoosiers can reach with her? Yeah, she's an inc incredible asset. I mean, against Gulf Coast, 14 kills. She was the team's leader in hitting with a knee injury. Yeah. So and if you can imagine, the volleyball players go up to hit, it's your whole body that you're using. So if this girl is able to get 14 kills in one game, be the team's leading scorer for hitters, and with a knee injury, how, can, how is that even possible? It, it makes me think, well, what is she going to do when she's healthy? Yeah, and just to hit on that real quick, I want to point out, I can't jump that high <laughs> with two fully functioning <laughs> knees. Oh, there's no prayer for me. No. no. Right, and, and she's out there with the knee injury. Yeah, it's what, what she's gone through is incredible and to be back out there. And yeah, as you mentioned, she can be a huge part of this team. Now we're going to transition a little bit into some quick fire questions for you. So general rule here, I'm going to try and hold you to 10 seconds or less on these responses. Ooh. But yeah, here we go. We're going to have some fun with it. <laughs> oh, no. And Haley, I'm going to start with you because you seem so <laughs> yeah. eager. OK, right. let's hear it. So this could be a player. This could be a coach. This could be, I don't know, a sandwich. And it, anything, what do you think is the most important factor to this IU volleyball team's success? Offense. Uh, the off offense. Offense. I panicked. Offense. <laughs> there you go. Quick and easy. Will. Um, it's going to be the crowds. Get the crowds out oh. at, uh, at, the, at the stadium, man. Wilkinson Hall has got the place to be this year. It's going to be the depth of the team. Next man up mentality, they can do it. Nice. No one said a sandwich. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> but. All right. Now we're going to move on, Jackson. I'm going to kick it back to you. Who is the most undervalued player on this team? I, I mentioned earlier Jackie Armour. She is so undervalued right now. Will? I'm going to have to go um, with Bailey Lebo. Kari Zumak. Kari Zumak, there you mm -hmm. go. I, I like it. We've got a whole a range of picks. And now, last question for you all. What will be, this is your prediction time, what will be IU's biggest win of the season? Haley, who do they take down? Or was it Kentucky? Wisconsin. You think the Hoosiers can take down Wisconsin? Interesting Let's go pick. for it. Will? All right, I'm going to say Minnesota. They go up, stun the Gophers, and they make a statement, we're here for real in this the Big a, Ten. It's a Minnesota team that was top five last season. Mm -hmm. Right. I was going to say Minnesota as well, but they could take down Wisconsin too. I mean, any Big Ten competition take them both be a down. big win. Yeah, take them all down. Why not? Everybody. <laughs> oh, with Steve Hurd, you never know. It's That's sort of it's true. Sort of organized chaos, I guess, if that's what you want to call organized it. Organized chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a fair beautiful assumption? Beautiful way to put it. There we go. Well, I think that's also a beautiful way to wrap up the show. So thanks for tuning in this week. Be sure to continue our discussion on Twitter, at IUSTV Sports, and on Facebook, also, at IUSTV Sports. You can always give any suggestions for the show and ask any questions that you might have. So toss it up, find out if we'll catch it. We'll see you next time.